Hey all, Heretic here, one of the Hearthstone Battlegrounds Player's Guide, and I'm here to bring you the information you need to help you win with Sire Denathrius. So get comfy and let's dive in. First, let's talk about the hero power whodunit. This costs zero gold and reads, passive, at the start of the game, choose one of two quests. So basically turn one, first thing that happens is two quests pop up, you decide which one you want to start with. So. This hero power is kind of odd in so much that you basically are just going to have two quests, which is great because quests are either incredibly weak or incredibly busted and you get two chances. And because you're getting two quests in the game, as opposed to everybody else only getting one, you can cobble together some really busted combos. Now, turn one, you're going to get that first one. And then turn four, you're going to get the second one. So you have to make some decisions knowing there's going to be a little vacuum in between, but you're going to have an edge on everybody else getting your first quest done before they even get to pick theirs. So it's really good. It has just insane potential, some of these quests, that if you can get lucky and cobble them together, you're off to the races. Now, downside is if you get poor quest rewards, if the quests are too difficult to pull off, you might be in trouble. So at some point, if you get offered a really poor combo, your best bet is to just go as much tempo as you can and try to get to, you know, fourth or fifth place. Don't worry about winning. Just try to stabilize your board if the points matter to you. Otherwise, cobble together a fun combo and go nuts. Now, when it comes to tiering with Denathrius, there is no set tier. And the reason for this is on turn one, you're going to get a quest. So right off the bat, you should be thinking, okay, what is this quest reward? What do I need to find? And you should be building for that. So sometimes that's just spending gold. So maybe you want to do a basic or a chief curve. And other times it's, oh my God, I just need to play minions on the board. So it's time to go warrior and just start slamming them as fast as you can. It also depends what families are in the lobby. These all can come into play to help you get those quests done. And it really depends what that first quest is going to give you for rewards. And if you can find the pieces to complete it. So there is no set curve with Denathrius. It's whatever the first quest gives you really dictates what you're gonna do. So when it comes to the quest I'm looking at when I'm gonna play Denathrius, this is hard. So typically I'm gonna look at rewards first because rewards are basically your hero power. This is what you need to get. You're gonna get two of them. So let's get them online. So first, which one do we want? Okay, well now look to see what the quest is because if the quest isn't compatible with the reward, it might be hard to pull off. If this is your turn one quest, great. You're probably going to be able to finagle it, even if it's not something you want to do. If it's like, you know, buy Murlocs, get a death rattle reward. It doesn't make much sense. But if it's turn one, if it's only buy three or four Murlocs, who cares? If it's buy 10, because some of these quests vary dramatically in the difficulty to accomplish. I'm just giving this for an example. So what you want to do is make sure one, your quest is completable by you. And two, is the reward worth it? Now, it's pretty obvious quests are great when you get one of them and they synergize with your hero power. Since Denathrius doesn't have a hero power, you have an advantage of finding broken combinations of quests and their rewards that can really help you run wild. I'll just give you a simple example. If you're running beast comp, mech, or demons, sometimes the Theator's parcel is pretty good. It's like, oh, I've got a Baron in the back. He's gonna be catching you know, stealth, extra health amazing but oh wait i get two quest rewards and the other one is ritual dagger so now you have a baron who essentially can't be killed and a board that's growing every time things die it doesn't really matter which death rattle build you're playing the board can get out of control really quick and it's super powerful now while i don't advise this build it is fun if you can find yourself just having to get the pieces for it say dragons are in you've been offered stolen gold and staff of origination well, if you get Terragosa, stolen gold makes a minion gold for combat on the right and left. So you stick your Terragosa on the left, make it gold, and then you can move it anywhere you want after that. Staff of Origination gives your board plus 15, plus 15 for every round of combat. Well, since Terragosa keeps those buffs, you are now gaining 30, 30 once they're gold, and your board can grow very, very quickly, and it's a lot of fun. Is it easy to pull off? Not really. Is it fun to do? Yes. Another good example of broken quest combos is Anima Bribe and Cookbook. So let's say you buy a minion, that's going to give it plus one, plus one. Every time you buy a minion, that plus one, plus one is going to increase. So one, one, two, two, three, three, and it just keeps going exponentially. Well, 
Anima Bribe, every time you sell a minion to the shop, it's going to give those stats back to the shop. So you can see where this is going. You are selling minions that get progressively bigger into the shop, which then the shop gets progressively bigger one minion at a time until there's only one left. When you buy that, basically, you know, late game, you're looking at a minion that's easily minimum 30-30, if not significantly bigger after a few turns of having this quest done. It's a really good combo. Basically, you're what Dancing Daryl wishes they could be. Another hidden body and secret sinstone also go great together. So another hidden body is you're going to discover a minion of your tavern tier. But Secret Sinstone makes you discover again whenever you discover. So easy automatic combo gives you really good cards really fast. Another really, really good one is Pilfered Lamps and Victim Spectre. Pilfered Lamps makes it so you just need to have two of a copy to get a triple. But Victim's Spectre gives you a copy of the last card that died. So as long as you're not playing a token board... Typically, you can line up triples pretty quick if you make sure the last couple minions to die, you only have one of. Really, really fun. You can do some really wacky things with this one and get a gold board incredibly fast that's super powerful. And these are just a couple examples of what you can do. I'm sure there's more. I'm sure some of these quests and rewards will be, you know, nudged one way or another by Blizzard. But right now, these are just some of the examples of truly powerful, fun combinations you can do that you can't do with anybody except Denathrius. So when it comes to the minions and the strats I like to use when playing Denathrius, doesn't super apply here. Basically, build towards your quest the rewards they give you and cobble together whatever's going to be the most effective board once you get them. Oftentimes, you will have to buy things you don't actually want to, with the rewards you're going to get. So you have to get it done early, especially in that turn one quest, and then when the turn four, Hopefully what you're get earning from the turn one will help you complete the four even faster and get great rewards. It's a question of, do I just take the most tempo quests? Should I have been taking, you know, one tempo and one really long-term big powerful one? It's lobby specific, and since it's so random the ones that are offered for you, it's hard to say exactly. Typically lean towards tempo, but you get a good long-term one and you already have a good short-term one, the two of them might equal an easy first place. Now, when it comes to countering Denathrius, you check their quests, look at their pro trait, see what they've completed, if any. If they haven't completed any quests and you see they're playing Beast, they're just playing Beast, counter it like normal. If they've completed one quest and not the other, take a look at it. Did they just complete Ritual Dagger? Because if they completed it now, it doesn't really affect your combat, it will later. Is it a quest that's more relevant to the combat immediately, like, oh, they just completed Stolen Gold? Well, now you know they're going to have at least two gold minions next time you fight them, no matter what you do. So you have to plan accordingly. Denathrius can be tricky, but just pay attention to what quests he's completed and which ones he has not. Real quick, I hope these guides are making you a better player, at least more informed, and you're having fun and enjoying the game, and these are helping you in that quest to be better at your game. They certainly make me a better player, and I enjoy making these guides a lot. So please, if you can, click subscribe, hit the like button. Those help me grow my audience, stay motivated, and we can all keep having fun. Thank you. Overall, I love Denathrius. Are they a good hero? It's too inconsistent to say they're a good hero. Are they a fun hero? Yes, lots of fun. You get two quests, two rewards, you get them to line up sometimes the stars, and you can just go off to the races and do some just silly, silly fun combinations. It's well worth your time if you like quest. If you don't like quests and you don't really enjoy them, stay away from Denathrius because the randomness of the quests and the rewards will break your will and you will hate them. Otherwise, if you enjoy some of this fun and random and putting together combos you just can't anywhere else, play them. He's well worth it. He's a lot of fun. And just overall, I find it to be an enjoyable experience. Or if it's not, at least a very fast one. Because if you find no good quest or rewards, you're probably dead pretty quick. So move on to the next game. Uh, stay tuned. I have more guides on the way. I hope you learned a few things today and had a good time. I know I did. Thanks for watching. Bye.